we did have some promising numbers. Um, that's kind of the flip side of the coin and points to maybe a way out of the bad place that we're in right now as a country. So these little signs. So of course, we've been tracking the great resignation and we just got new numbers in that were another record-breaking historic month for resignations. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen with the numbers there. More quit jobs than ever and most of the turnover is in low wage work. More than 4.5 million people voluntarily left their jobs in November. That was up from 4.2 million in October. It was the most in the two decades that the government has been keeping track. And as I indicated, the place where, you know, that saw the largest turnover was in low-wage work in these positions where previously workers didn't feel like they had a choice. Mm -hmm. They may have hated their job. It may have been wildly insufficient in terms of their wages and their benefits. The scheduling may have been abhorrent. They may have been treated completely inhumanely, but they didn't feel like they had a choice to leave. Now you have millions of people every single month saying, I'm out of here. I'm doing something different. You combine that with what we've been tracking in terms of unionization and strikes and walkouts and other forms of workers exerting their power. And this is actually very, very encouraging because one of the, the main, if not the main structural issue in my mind in the country has been this dramatic imbalance where you know you have a few people and corporate entities that have so much power and everyone else is just treated as a pawn, um, which gives you ultimately, you know, if you care about things like freedom and choice, that ultimately you may have the illusion of some sort of freedom and liberty. But if the only place where you can work is Walmart and you just have to take whatever deal they're going to give you, what kind of freedom is that really? So this, to me, is a, a sort of central metric of people having actual liberty and choice and freedom and ability to um, change the direction that their life is going in. And the reason I love this, too, is an entirely blue-collar phenomenon. It is all turnover in previously lower wage work. Now, the wages, obviously, we talk about inflation, regressive taxation, all of that. That is absolutely true. But the amount of bargaining power that we're blue collar and lower paid workers have right now is its highest point ever. Almost 30 something million Americans turned over their jobs, which is, this is the <laughs> other one. wild. Think about it too, in terms of popular culture representation. Nobody is talking about this. To the extent I do see people talking about it, it's like doctors and healthcare workers. They're like the burnout amongst these folks. No disrespect to the nurses and the doctors out there. I'm sure it has been a very difficult year, but the real focus to me are the delivery drivers and the McDonald's workers and the Starbucks workers that we had here on our show and the people that we've discussed with and said, hey, I got treated like crap, $11 an hour. I said, screw you. I quit in a dramatic fashion and I went and I got a job the next day for $15 an hour. Everybody can relate. Every Almost every small business you walk into in the country has a help wanted sign outdoor. People are paying $15 an hour, $17 an hour. You see signs at like Taco Bell's saying, we hire on the spot, you know, just come in, we'll give you a job, like let's go. I'll give you a bonus, $100 in cash. These are the most positive phenomena that we've seen yet. And it's necessary because these people are driving record profits. Remember, corporate profits are an all-time high. The S&P 500 is not an all-time high. Pre-pandemic, even highs have been beat. The richest Americans have a disproportionate amount of wealth. And because of a variety of circumstances, of which they're very multifaceted, early retirements, reassessment of life, geographical dislocation, pandemic, et cetera, a lot of people are willing to say, no, I'm willing to go take this new job. I'm willing to take a risk. New businesses are being started in a, we're, we literally are an example of that, are being started at a record rate. But all of this is flying under the radar of kind of the comfort class who are zooming in from work and have from the very beginning. Uh, so that's why it deserves real, I think we should hail it as a very positive phenomenon. And if I were to have any hope about the future, this is what I would point to. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are really pissed off right now, and that that's really terrible in the moment. But that leads to 
new choices and new things. And maybe you were previously miserable, like a slow burning misery. And you said, screw it, I'm finally gonna take care of myself. Or I'm finally gonna go and do something um, that I actually enjoy. So from the, you know, from the ashes rise the phoenix, like yeah. so people say. And I, I, I really hope and believe that we're in a point like that right now. We desperately need a rebalancing of the scales. And we desperately need, I mean, the only cure for what ails us is rather than moving in the, you know, increasing police state and lockdown state, direction, which is, again, something we're going to talk to Glenn about, is having more people involved, more people having faith that their voices count in the process. And that's not just at the national political level, but also in the workplace, which is why these union efforts are so important, why people, you know, standing in solidarity and being able to fight against these big corporations and win some minor concessions. I mean, mostly these workers aren't asking for that much, just sort of like, you know, a basic fair bargain. Um, for their incredible labor that they're putting in. And so this is just a, a sign that workers, that the scales have tipped a little bit. I mean, the downside, which is a huge downside, is that according to this article, only 17% of workers say that they've gotten a raise sufficient to keep up with inflation. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why you have this very strange economic landscape of, on the one hand, I mean, these metrics about the great resignation are phenomenal, tight labor market, people being able to jump jobs and get big pay raises, all of these things are good, but then it's being totally swallowed and eaten up by inflation. The pandemic support programs have all mostly, you know, all, all but I think the student loan relief have been pulled at this point, and that's set to be to go away here soon, so people are spending down their savings accounts. That's why they are such an incredibly pessimistic feeling about the direction the economy is going in and how people are doing personally this year versus last year. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing we don't want to miss, uh, some good news put yeah. that up there on the screen, U.S. businesses actually added 800,000 jobs in December despite the emergence of Omicron. And this is from new data by payroll processor ADP. So the ADP report, which is a ve it's generally a very you know, closely watched gauge of private sector growth, showed the private payrolls twice as many new workers as analysts had projected. So look, it's just one data point. It is December, but this could be, you know, we've had those dismal jobs months before. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're on an upswing. I, I generally begin to think that we are, yes, Omicron may have had some disruption in that, so we might see that maybe more in the month of January because some of these crazy restrictions, which we're about to talk about, are still in place. But there is a reason to be hopeful, and there is transformation that is happening. Par part of the thing about dynamism is sometimes it's uncomfortable, but I think we're getting there. Let me say, because we're kind of wrapping up a little bit of yeah. our January 6th yes. blocks here. So to, to tie it back together, part of why I find the, the media coverage that is really uh, pernicious, this direction of, rather than talking about these underlying issues, these structural issues that both parties are complicit in to various degrees, just sort of demonizing people who, you know, in some cases do things that are genuinely bad or acting like total assholes or committing crimes, et cetera, um, because the only way out of this is if we have actually more faith and more trust in each other and can have more democracy, not less. And so if your whole project, and this is Matt Taibbi hating, something we've talked about mm -hmm. here a lot, but if your whole project is just, let me convince you, let me play to you, let me titillate you, let me scare you, let me freak you out, let me make you angry by convincing you that this half of the population is evil and bad and irredeemable, there's no direction forward from that. Yeah. I mean, there's no way forward from that. The, the way forward from that is for, further sort of police state, for, you know, deep state security state getting stronger and locking down because you got to keep those bad ones in check. That, or, or the other direction is let's make sure that these people can't vote. <laughs> let's like push them outside of the public square. Let's push them off of Twitter. Let's ban them from YouTube. Let's make sure that they're just sort of like, you know, push to the margins and shut up as much as we possibly can. That's, that's no way to live. Mm -hmm. That's no way to have a society, ultimately. So that's the other reason why I find, you know, the, the media coverage that goes in that direction so pernicious. Um, that's why I find it so troubling a lot of the direction that the, the conversation out of 1-6 was and some of the tactics that it's been used to justify is because that's the opposite of the direction that we need to go in. So the one place where I really see hope and sort of budding democracy and people standing shoulder to shoulder, 
putting their faith in their brothers and sisters in their workplace is with these strikes, with the great resignation numbers, with this movement um, among the workforce. And I think that's the place that personally I'm looking to 22 with a lot of 2022 with a lot of help. I agree. Uh, if there is a glimmer of hope, it's going to be here. I'm not saying things won't be terrible. <laughs> I do think that the midterm elections are going to be fun, uh, and we'll have some we'll have some fun in covering that here. It's going to reveal a lot about what you guys are actually thinking, and people in this town are going to start waking up. At least that's my hope. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I probably should be cynical. What can I say? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.